Hello everybody, welcome to the video. I'm on tour right now in Australia, in Sydney here. There's the world famous Sydney Opera House there. Pretty beautiful. It's kind of rainy today, but I was like, you know what, I'm gonna come out and film anyways. Really stoked to be on tour here in Australia right now. So, if you're new to the channel, my name's Lon Eagleton. I am a professional musician, been doing tours and sessions for over a decade now. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top five tips that I've learned along the way to sound like a pro to be a pro musician. Uh, basically, you know, the five best pieces of advice I could give you to improve your musical skills. So, if that's something you're into, stick around. Welcome to the video. Welcome to Sydney. Okay, tip number one today. Play your music with conviction. Now what I mean by that is when you're playing a piece of music, really put feeling, intention, passion into the piece and it's really gonna show, as opposed to just kinda playing something timidly, quietly, with fear. It really goes a long way. Here, let me show you some examples of what I'm talking about. Yeah, taking this approach really is a sure way to level up your playing, make you sound a lot more pro, in my opinion. And, you know, even if you do make a mistake, just make it loud and proud, you know, because I promise you this, if you play with conviction, a wrong note played with conviction, like a mistake played with feeling and intention, is going to sound way better than a right note played timidly with fear. Sounds kind of strange, but yeah, I promise you that really is the case. So play with conviction. That's tip number one today. And this actually leads me to my next point in today's video, which is that it's okay to make mistakes in music. Now, they're gonna happen, right? That's just part of playing a show. Mistakes are gonna be made. And as musicians, when we do make mistakes, we tend to build it up in our minds that it's a much bigger deal than it is. It's like all we think about for the rest of the show. We're way too hard on ourselves. But, you know, I promise you that we always make it more of a big deal in our minds than it actually is, right? If we play a wrong note, it's like probably 99% of the audience didn't even realize it. Yet in our brains, there's like a huge catastrophe going on. Like, oh no, what just happened? So I think like, you know, the analogy I always give is that it's just music. We're just creating sound. It's not heart surgery. Nobody's life is on the line. Like if a surgeon makes a mistake, you know, there's p potential death involved. As, as musicians, if we make a mistake, it's just, oh, maybe it didn't sound quite as good as it could have. So really in the grand scheme of things, that's nothing, you know? So I think taking that approach has helped me. And you know, at the end of the day, if you do make a mistake, make it with conviction and then make it twice, right? Then everyone will think you meant to do it the first time. And yeah, of course we do want to play everything as accurate as possible. You know, we want to try to be as accurate as we can when playing music, but when mistakes do happen, and they will, uh, don't get worked up about it. All right, so I just wanna share a quick story here um, of an event that I'm reminded of on this same topic. So when I was early on in my career, you know, might have been late teens or early 20s or something, I would get super worked up about any mistake that I made. It was like the end of the world for me every time it happened. And I would just get so worked up about it. And I remember a time, it was my first time ever playing a show in Toronto. I flew there from Vancouver and I was sitting beside the drummer I was working with at the time on the flight. And he was a total pro, somebody I really looked up to. He had, you know, years and years of experience in the industry. He had played in arenas, played with some very big artists. And I really looked up to him, you know. And I was telling him about this, like making mistakes and how I got worked up about it. And he was like, Lonnie, I've been doing this for a long time. I've played some big shows. And he's like, I can't remember the last time 
I played a show without making a mistake. And that really resonated with me. I was like, man, if somebody like this, of this stature, who's doing these types of shows regularly, makes mistakes every single show, you know, then what chance do I have of not? And I guess it's totally okay. And that's kind of the attitude I've carried forward through the rest of my career. Like, oh, it's okay to mess up. You know, you gotta do it in a professional way. Cover your tracks through the song, you know, keep playing with conviction and don't let it uh, don't let it affect you in the way that it's gonna make you make future mistakes in the show. But mistakes will happen and when they do it's okay. Okay our next tip in today's video is to be sure to listen to all of what's going on in the soundscape on stage. Listen to all the instruments playing and not just to yourself. You know, it's so easy to get caught up only listening to your own instrument, only listening to what you're playing, and kind of having all the other instruments on stage just being a general wash of music underneath you. Really, that's the wrong approach. You know, you want to make sure you're listening to what everybody's playing. Now, this is something I was guilty of for years as a young musician, and it really is a, a sure giveaway sign of inexperience, in my opinion. Once you can train your ear to open up and hear the entirety of what's happening on stage, hear what all the musicians are playing, it's gonna allow you to essentially play with the other band members and not simply be playing along with the other band members. You know, because there's a big difference. It's like, you know, being able to hear different patterns in the hi-hat from night to night. Or like, if the guitar player maybe adds a note here or there, pick, picking up on that, being like, oh, that was cool, you know? So yeah, being able to hear all of what's going on on stage, listening to the other members, not just to yourself, very important. Definitely try it out if you haven't yet. Rain's starting to come down pretty hard here. Got the umbrella pulled out. Uh, anyways, next tip in today's video is that there's always something to be learned from the musicians you're playing with when you're playing with them. You know, you can always learn from the other people you're playing with. Now, this is particularly true when you're playing with people who are better than you, you know, of course. But what a lot of people fail to realize is that it's almost more true when you're playing with musicians who are less experienced than you. There's almost more to be learned in that situation. And you know, I'm not trying to say that playing music should be a competition or that it is a competition or that we should be comparing ourselves to people in that way. Um, definitely not the case. But that being said, when you're thrown into a situation where you're playing with someone who has a lot less experience than you, don't just dismiss the situation as a write-off. You know, instead, try your best to understand what about that musician's playing makes you think that they're less experienced than you. Or what about your own playing makes you feel like you have more experience, you know? This exercise alone can actually teach us a lot and it can also be a great opportunity to maybe help and share advice to people around you, if they're open to it, of course. And also allow us to become better musicians and music teachers ourselves, which I think is another great skill and responsibility we have, in my opinion as musicians, you know, passing the knowledge along to the next generation or the next group of players and always being on the hunt for knowledge, right? Always being out there trying to learn, trying to better ourselves as musicians and as people. All right, my next tip is listen to and learn different musical genres and styles. Listen to as many different genres as you can, you know, because there's so much that can be learned from music that's outside of your comfort zone, outside of your wheelhouse. You know, don't be the guy who's like, oh, I only listen to metal, or I only listen to pop, or whatever it is. Because really, by having that attitude, you're only limiting what you can learn and limiting your potential skill set. And you know, if you go out and explore a different genre, Let's say you go and learn country, for example, and you don't listen to much country, but you're like, hey, I'm gonna go learn country. It's only gonna improve the genre of your choice that you do like playing. So definitely don't limit yourself to one genre. The more you can learn, the better. 
You know, you learn country, it's going to make you a better metal player. You learn pop, it's going to make you a better jazz player. Um, you know, I could go on with examples forever. But yeah, having this approach is a sure way to help your musicianship. Uh, take it from me. I promise you it's really going to help. All right, if you guys have any tips of your own that you want to share with us, please write them in the comments below. Uh, any more tips on playing music? You know, I'm sure we all want to keep learning and become the best we can. So please share any other tips in the comments below. And yeah, if you found any value in this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. I'm going to go uh, get dry in the hotel here because it's starting to get pretty cold. It's winter time in Australia right now, which is strange because it's summertime in uh, North America. So it's flipped. But yeah, looking forward to uh, playing the shows here in Australia. It's going to be a really fun tour. First show is in Sydney tomorrow. So yeah, going to be good. All right, thanks for joining us. See you in the next video.